morning, good afternoon, good evening. Today is February 22nd, 2021. Welcome to the Julie and Milo show. My name is Julie. I'm coming to you from Newport Beach, California. My dear friend, Milo. Milo, could you please say hello? Hey, how are you guys doing? Milo from Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you, Milo. Milo, you and I are sitting and talking to each other and talking to many of our founders across the world. You are, you and I probably have the same feelings, the same belief every morning that we wake up is that on passive is here and on passive is going to change the world. But behind the on passive, we have our CEO, Mr. Ash Mufar, his team, and the tech team in Hyderabad. And over the last week, we've heard that many of our tech team has um, COVID. So I'd like to um, say, you know, send a well wish and uh, hopefully speedy recovery to all of our tech team there. But not only that, there's many things that happen in our community um, for the people that are affected by the short of electricity and uh, short of water in Texas, not only that, we do have a few of our members uh, have families um, that passed away. So I I wanted to dedicate the show just to send um, wishes, well wishes uh, to the people that got affected. What do you think about it, Milo? Absolutely. You know, we live in a, a time that's just tough, you know. It is, it is. And yes, and the community of Go founders are here um, to supporting each other, to share the love and share the vision of Mr. Ash Mufar uh, that uh, he had shared with us many, many times. And uh, in a holding room is a special guest. And I'd like to have Milo, if you could please uh, introduce our guest. Sure thing, uh, Julie. So yes, uh, we don't know much about uh, this guy, a uh, founder, but I'll tell you what, he was before the show, we talked to him a little bit. Very interesting guy. So I'm going to bring him out right now. Mr. David Switzer. Come on out, David. Hey, hey. how we doing? Good. How are you doing, David? Welcome Hi. to the show. Well, thank you. Hello, David. Welcome to the show. Good to have I'm you. Happy, I'm happy to be here. All right. Well, good, good. Okay, David, uh, we love talking to the founders. Me and Julie say, man, there's there's nothing. We're just so blessed, the two of us, to get to talk to founders each day and learn a little more about it. And today we get to learn about you, a little bit about you. So, David, we want to start right from the top. Where were you born, your parents, your siblings, and your, your family now? Take about three minutes on that. Well, I was born in Lyons, Ohio, and... Um... I lived there for 23 years, and I got uh, four brothers and one sister right now. And um, so anyhow, we uh, lived there for 23 years, and then I decided to move to Kansas, and we all live in Kansas now. So I got one do I got two daughters. One's married and one's not. And I also got a, my wife. Me and my wife have been married for 28 years now, going on 28 years. So um, I kind of got, I was kind of late getting married in my life, but there's 12 years between me and my wife, but we have a good life together. So anyhow, I kind of wish I was 10 years younger, but you know, but that's the way it worked out. You know, like I was, I never got married to like 40. So, but that's okay. I had to get the party life out of me. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So anyhow, we all live right here in, in a small town right now. My family lived over there in Cassidy, Kansas, and uh, they're not around anymore. They uh, passed on about three or four years ago. So anyhow, it's just us now as a family now. That's fantastic. I know you've done a man, many, many interesting things in your life, um, but you shared with us in our previous conversation that you had a little bit of handicap when you uh, when you were young. Please tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, when I was born, I was uh, I was born as my mom told me that my brain was bruised a little bit, so it hurt me on my reading and my spelling, and 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 hurt me on my name uh, trying to remember names, and also affected my speech a little bit too. And I I got a little bit of literature literature in me, you know, 
And so anyhow, I, I deal with that the rest of my life. And I was in special education. I didn't say anything, but I was in special education my whole life, my school life. But you know what? I didn't leave that hold me back because I had that problem. And I worked really hard in my lifetime. So I guess right after I graduated and I was in special education, one good thing about me being in special education, my, my senior year, I didn't have to go to school. I was in a, uh, this program I was in, as long as I had a job, I didn't have to go to school at all. You know, I just have to report to school once a week, you know? So, I mean, that was a good thing on my part because what it did, it teach me to go out and learn how to work in life. And, um, and I, and the nice thing about me that back in my younger days, I like making money, you know, of course, when you get that taste of money, you know, you're going to go out and work and do what you can to make that money. But, Anyhow, I graduated, you know, with a four-point average in my class, so I did pretty good in my class. And then after I graduated, I went to school in North Ca uh, Newcastle, Pennsylvania, as an electrician. I went to school with, uh, to be an electrician. And here I am. I can't spell or read, and my got this literacy problem. I still went to school because I know that I want to better myself. So I went to school. And I spent eight hours a day on a board and wired up different switches, panel boxes. That's all I did. And I got really good at that. So and the next thing I did is I took an electric motor. And I took an electric motor apart. And you know how an electric motor's got all those copper twines in it and everything else? I took all those twines out and because it was a bad motor. I took it all out. And I put all new copper twines in that motor and I hooked them, hooked them all up. And I, you have to put like a varnish on it. And I put a varnish and you had to bake it for a little while. But after I did all that, that motor ran. I couldn't believe it. That motor ran. And I was so proud of myself that I made that motor run. And before I left, they used it and had a heater that broke down. So they used that motor up there. And as far as I know, it's still running. I don't know. That was many years ago. But anyhow... But my handicap kind of hold me back from uh, doing things that I want to do. And uh, so I had to accept it, you know, like I was very, wasn't a very good writer and I wasn't a good speller. And it kind of hurt my feelings a little bit because the idea that I couldn't do what normal people do. So one thing that, you know, one thing that God did give me, gave me two hands and I was good uh, working and I was really good with my hands and, and, uh, I was good at learning things. I mean, on the reading and spelling part, I was kind of slow on that part. But learning things, I was really good at. So I just knew that I um, had to go out and do regular uh, industry jobs. But the main thing before I get into that, I used to have to be a paper boy. And I don't even know what people didn't even do that anymore. They're, they don't have a – they don't do paper boys anymore. That's an adult job anymore. But I used to have a paper route, and I used to get up early in the morning and go out and deliver papers. And um, so anyhow, that was, a, that was a main thing I liked to do when I was a kid, when I was a paper boy. And one thing I really enjoyed is, is when I went around on the end of the week, I, uh, I feel pretty big. I feel pretty proud of myself. I had this little coin, sh coin thing on the side of my deal there. And when I went out and everybody had to pay her paper bill, I go over there and I collect the money. And it would ask for change, and I just get my little coin thing and pick what I want for change because I'm getting it back. I feel pretty big when I was a kid like that. And the nice thing about it, too, during the holidays, too, I used to get tips and stuff. And I used to deliver papers at a factory, too, and they would give me tips and stuff. But I don't know. But, you know, I used to. I used to went out, my goal was to work in the, the big industry. I was a peace worker. I worked in a steel foundry. And then after I worked in the steel foundry, my whole family moved to Kansas. So after they moved to Kansas, I was two years before I moved to Kansas. And I was in a kind of like in a racing club. I didn't want to move at the time because I was in that racing club. So anyhow, after I moved to Kansas, I got in a, uh, I did construction work with my dad for a while. And I learned that we built a few houses and I used to do some wiring for him in the house. You know, my dad was really good. I mean, he can do heating, air conditioning. He built his own cabinets and he was really good at what he did. So anyhow, I built a few houses with him and then I decided to go into packing house business. And I went into packing house business and I knew that 
I had this handicap problem, but yet I wasn't going to let that stop me from getting ahead in life. So the main thing I did, I went around and learned all the jobs on the floor and I got really good at what I'm doing. And then, and then thing too, you got to work with your supervisors. And I was really good with the supervisor working with them. So I kind of moved up the ladder. I was a, a trainer. I trained people. And then I move up to the lead person where I was the lead person. I help your supervisor out. And then I went all the way up to a supervisor. And then I made it all the way up to a general foreman. And then I made it all the way up to a superintendent of the floor. I ran the whole operation. So not too bad for having a handicap, you know? Wow. And so, like I said, I never let that stop me because uh, I knew God told me that I was good with my hands and I took advantage of that. And, but I went, I, I worked in the packing house for until I was 46. And the thing is, what's kind of hurt me a little bit was the, when they was coming out with the internet. I remember when the internet was first coming out. So, they had to do everything on the computers and stuff, and that was kind of hurting me. And the company was going through a lot of changings and stuff like that. So I knew at 46, it was time to get out of that. So I got out of that. And then I moved back here to Kansas to be closer with my family. And after I uh, moved closer with my family, I worked in a place called Dolly Madison. I don't know if you've ever heard of Dolly Madison, but they make cupcakes, Twinkies, yeah. and Zingers. And, and so I did all that. I went around and learned all the jobs at Dolly Madison. I ran about every mixer in that place. And, and, uh, and I had all the good things. The nice thing about working in the bakery, you can eat all the donuts you want. You know, they won't say anything, you know. <laughs> so wow. I, tried about, I tried about every donut and every zinger they had over there. And, and uh, so I worked in the bakery for a while. And then, you know, and then they, uh, they was having uh, money problems. They went bankrupt. So I ended up losing my job, and and so I went to uh, lost my job, and I went six months without a job. So I told my wife, you know what? Uh, they're offering you this school because when somebody gets laid off, they offered to send you to school. So they made us. So anyhow, I decided to go to school in heating and air conditioning, and I went to school in heating and air air conditioning. Even though I had this handicap, I did not let that stop me. So I went to school in heating and air conditioning. I did, you know, they, you have to take a test every week in that school. And when I took my test, I had to go back home and study and study it because it was, it was a fast school. I mean, you you're learn about something, you have to take a test on it. You learn about something, you have to take a test on it. So here I am, I have this little bit of a learning problem and I have to take these tests and I was really nervous about taking these tests. So I would come home and I would study up for the tests. And I would spend like three or four hours just studying this test so I can go and pass the test. So when I had the test the next day, my test score was like 95, 96%. So I was in the high 90s and I was really proud of myself because with my handicap and I can keep a test score that high and, and, and do really good. And so anyhow, the teachers, the, all the teachers knew I had a problem with that a little bit. So they kind of jumped in to help me out. But I ended up, uh, got all my certification, everything in air conditioning, and and now I got all the paperwork. I got a notch on my belt because I, I did it, you know. Wow, that's amazing, uh, David. And, I mean, what you've accomplished is, is truly amazing in your life. I mean, you're something special, you know, and you're, you're, you are one of a kind, you know. And, and uh, there's a song that says, God gave me this beautiful body and a bright, healthy mind, you know. And, and you have exceeded everything that you should and i don't know if anyone's told you today or not but you are awesome you are yeah. really awesome man and and uh you keep uh, you keep that drive up because you will go places you know and i know me and you talked a little bit about uh, cars and stuff uh, uh you know and, and so tell us a little bit about the cars that you had real quick and uh and then we're going to move on yeah well i Back in my younger days, I loved muscle cars, and I still do love muscle cars today. I was in a, I was when I lived back in Ohio, I was in a, uh, I was in a racing club, and I hanged around the drag strips quite a bit. And I used to have a '71 Barracuda that I used to drag race, and it, it was a really nice car. And uh, so I won a couple, I won a couple trophies with that uh, Barracuda, and it was really fun to go on that drag strip, and race that car all the way down that drag strip. And you just had a good feeling about that when you're going down that drag strip. Even though you might not have won that race, but 
it, you still had that good feeling going down that drag strip. And so I was really proud that I won a couple trophies with that car. And what's nice about being a drag strip, you see things in a, in a, in the pit area that you never see by sitting up on the stand. What's nice is sitting about in the pit area that uh, you get to see all these fancy new cars coming in, what they've done to the motors and how they fix them up and all that stuff. Also, I've been around these cars that they had a jet engine on them. And that was something to really see when they fire those jet engines up and they go down that strip. Oh man, you talk about the power coming out of them. But you know, I really enjoyed all that. I was, um, I think really turned me off about the drag racing was uh, the, a lot of people would drive these, have these nice racing cars on the trailers. And then anyway, drive a junky old truck coming in because you can tell about where all the money went in that racing car. But the thing is that um, I also had a 1955 Chevy. I didn't say that, but I had a 1955 Chevy. It was set up for racing too. It had a big, uh, big Buick engine in it. I don't know why anybody would put a Buick engine in a Chevy, but that's what was in it. But I never got the race out. I never finished it, but I ended up selling that. But uh, yeah, I've had a lot of cars in my lifetime. I've had a Chevelle 396 four-speed. I really enjoy that car. I had a Firebird. I had a, one of the new, uh, I had a 79 uh, Trans Am Firebird, had the T-top on it, and I really enjoyed that. Um, I had a Corvette, and uh, I didn't have a T-top. I had a Corvette. I enjoyed that. I had a lot of old cars, too. I had a 65 International Scout that I fixed up and redid the bodywork, repainted, and uh, had a four-cylinder in it, and that was a nice little Scout, but like I say, I'm I probably had about 50 cars in my lifetime, so I was really a car nut. That's all. Awesome. And, and I still have a truck right now. It's a it's a 1999 Dodge Dakota RT. It's got a five, uh, 360 engine in it, a 5.9 liter engine, you would call. Awesome. But, I love really? it when I see I love it when I see you guys sit uh, sit around and talk about cars because I'm into cars too. I like cars too. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Well, David, um, I have seen you in the community. I've seen you appear on a lot of webinars. I've seen a lot of your posts about on passive. Um, and I like to find out a little bit more about you. When did you join on passive? How did you hear about on passive? And why did you join on passive? Well, I was, like I said, I told you, I was in marketing a while back and, and I, and I, and it wasn't a good marketing company and and it was a big marketing company and um and i lost quite a bit of money in that marketing company because they ended up getting shut down but you know i was kind of burned down on that because i lost all that money and then i stumbled on on pass it on the internet and actually i didn't jump in it right away i kind of looked at it and then i go back and look at it again then i decided to watch some webinars and then after I watched the webinars and, and Scott Nelson, I, I listened to Scott Nelson. He was still living and he was a good speaker. I really enjoy listening to Scott Nelson. And so he's the one that kind of got me in it. Tell you the truth. I listened to him. And so I, it, I was listening to him and I was thinking, well, this is a good program to me to get into. So I got in it and um, I been, I joined it uh, March of 2019. So I've been in for quite a while. Um, so but I haven't regret any of it. I enjoy all the webinars going to to it. I, I think this is going to be a good thing for people to get into. It's going to help a lot of people. Uh, it's going to help the young people. It's going to help the middle class people. And it's going to help the senior citizen, you know. And also that if anybody has got a little bit of a handicap, I think it's going to help them. If they need to make a little bit of money for handicapped people, they can get into that and have a little extra income to help them out too. I think it's a great program. I think it's going to, it's going to do a help a lot, a lot, a lot of people in a different ways, you know? Absolutely. You know, and, and I like to say uh, on this show that, you know, on passive is changing the world one person at a time. And it started with Ash Mofaro and we're running out of time, but, uh, uh, I want to bring up the the thing about, you know, when, when people first come in, a lot of times it's about how much money are we going to make? You know, what's, what's it going to do for me? And I think it, as it goes on and you start going to the webinars and you start uh, kind of picking up the culture of own passive, it becomes, you know, that's kind of secondary because we know that we're going to get the money. You know, you know, it's a done deal that uh, you're going to get as many apples as you want, you know, but 
what are you going to do with the extra apples that are left over at the end of the month? You know, because you're going to have extra apples. Once you start living in abundance, it's a different life. And uh, so, uh, you know, Own Passive has that built in, uh, how to how you can give back and stuff. So I'd like you to, uh, you know, take a couple minutes and just tell us what you think about uh, the give back programs and stuff. Well, when I get my priorities set, you know, everybody's got to set their priorities. But when I get my priorities all set, what I would like to do is uh, I got my wife. She's Mexican and she's got family in Mexico. I probably wouldn't mind help spend a little bit of money over there because those people, they're kind of poor over there, you know. So I would like to help them out a little bit and 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 do good things for people as much as I can, you know. And uh, if somebody's in a bad way, I would like to try and jump in there and help them out. And another thing, too, that I like, too, and nobody don't bring this up too much, but I love animals, too. And, and I think it would be nice to go to an elder, um, animal shelter and, and give them a little bit of money, buy some dog food and stuff like that for them. And, uh, and I would like to do that, too. But I would like to, when I, like I said, do my part and help people and help animals. And that's what I wanted to do, you know. Absolutely. And you know, the, the cool thing about uh, with own passive, you could actually buy a spot for that animal shelter, you know, and, and let that thing grow and grow and grow. And it's going to constantly pay them if, if, you know, if they're into the, you know, you buy them a spot under you or whatever, it would not just be a one-time thing. It would pay them yeah. week after week, month after month, you know, and it's a great way to donate and stuff. And, and you're right. I mean, there, it is cool. A lot of animals, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of animal lovers out there that will, I'm sure, be doing that because we are going to be able to bless everyone. But uh, we, we are out of time. So I tell you what, I'm going to send it back over to Julie right there. Uh, so she can uh, take us out of here or whatever. Boy, time went fast. Uh, but you were awesome, man. I, I loved your heart. I loved, uh, you know, uh, where you come from and what you did with your life. It's beautiful. Absolutely. Thank you. thank you, Milo. And thank you, David, for coming here to share with us. If you have not shared that with us, I would have not known that you had a disabilities when you're growing up, but I really appreciate you share that story. Um, but I, I can't let you go until I have to ask you the last question. I know that all of us Go Founders are very excited about what's coming. However, we still have a few folks that are on the fence and also folks that uh, are in on passive, but they haven't really done anything. So what are your word of wisdoms to these folks, David? Well, my word of wisdom is you know, don't put it off any longer. Get in it because uh, you're going to have a really good future on Unpassed. And especially the the younger people that, you know, that can get in and have a full life, make a full life for themselves. Um, us old timers, we're, we're going to get started up on Passive, but, you know, you know, we're never going to see where, not, where, where on Passive is going to go in life because we might not be around then. But I'm saying that on Passive is going to be a good program to get into. And, and I'm, like I say, go to the webinars. And if you don't know anything about on Passa, go to the webinars, check them out. And I think that if you go to a few webinars, you're going to be wanting to get into it right away. Oh, that's awesome, David. And, and thank you, David, for uh, sharing that. And thank you so much for sharing your story today. It was, it was absolutely awesome to hear where you've come from and, and what you've did in your life. And remember, you are creating generational wealth. And so this, uh, this is a documentary. You will be able to send this and give this to your grandchildren, your children, your grandchildren, your, your great grandchildren. And they can know that, you know what? My Papa David was in this thing before it actually started, you know, and how cool is that, you know? So I appreciate you coming. I appreciate you telling your story. And it is so true. Never be hampered by anything. I would have not known anything. I've seen your posts. I've seen your videos. I love them. Keep doing it. Keep doing it the own passive way because you are in it to win it. Okay. I want to say one thing. I want okay. to thank Ash, La Ash Millard, what he's doing for us in I'm passive. Big thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Chewy, yes, <laughs> take us out of here because time is up. <laughs> yes. Yes. There you have it, everyone. That's David Switzer. Um, 
we 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 love talking about on passive because on passive is a real company a real business has real people and yes um the julie and milo show was born it's because of on passive and we love sitting here talking with all the founders and yes you can find us at um julie and milo.com that's where milo is pointing at it right now um if you listen to me to this message and you haven't been in on passive get back with the person who shared this message with you and if you are in on passive lock into your back office explore because you do have the key to the treasure the key to the treasure of knowledge and key to the treasure of heart and apple. So if you lock into the back office, listen to the webinar, you know what we meant when we say apple. So thank you so much for watching the Julie and Milo show. Please click the button, subscribe button and the bell to get notifications when we have shows coming up or when we have show uploaded. Please join our Facebook group on passive with the heart and uh, thank you so much for watching the Julie and Milo show. Have a great night and please be well. Good night from Newport, California. Bye everybody. Good night from Nashville, Tennessee.